Hi, welcome to Digging for Truth. I'm your co-host, Henry Smith, and we're glad to have you joining us for the program today. Today on Digging for Truth, we're going to be checking in with ABR staff member and pastor of Island Bible Chapel, Brian Wendell, who lives in Canada. And uh, we're glad to have him back on the show. He's been on many times, and uh, we're having him back today to talk about some resources related to the Bible to help people during this time. So, Brian, welcome back to Digging for Truth once again. Thanks so much, Henry. It's great to be back to join you. Yeah, it's good to see you, my friend. So uh, before we delve into our subject today is sort of, uh, you know, archaeology, faith resources, uh, quarantine edition is what we're doing. Yep. Um, tell us how you're doing up there in Canada. You know, uh, here in the States, uh, things are a little bit different. So go ahead and uh, share a little bit about your ministry up there during this time. Well, it's a different way of doing ministry. It's a different world right now, isn't it? And, and we haven't been hit as hard in Canada with this coronavirus as other countries have been. Uh, um, uh, just looking around at some of the statistics, it's, it's staggering, almost hard to comprehend. Um, you know, 20,000, 50,000 people yeah. dying from, from COVID-19. In Canada, to date, we've had fewer than 3,000 deaths. So we've been you know, I mean, that's still 3,000 deaths, but but we haven't been as hard hit as other uh, countries. Our government has has asked, has basically banned um, gatherings of more than five people, and uh, has asked um, churches to suspend their services on site. And so, in um, in submission to our government, we've done that. But I always been reminding our the church that I pastor that just because the on site. Uh, ministries have stopped doesn't mean the mission stops the mission still goes on and we um, will continue to do that we just have to find new methods and this is one of those methods we've moved a lot of our our stuff online so our, our prayer meeting is online now uh, the youth group I run is is done by zoom um, we are lear I've had to learn how to live stream um, for yeah. our church services that's been a steep learning curve but you know we're coming along getting a little more professional each week we do it and, um, you know, by God's grace, he's taking that uh, in new ways. I mean, the, the number of people now who we never would have been able to reach with our on-site ministries, we're now reaching virtually. And so uh, we're seeing God's blessing that way. So a different world, but, but the Lord is being good to us uh, through the midst of it. Yeah, that's good to hear, Brian. You know, uh, we're hearing a lot of stories about that in the States here. You know, it's my own experience of my own church. Uh, you know, live streaming and making the adjustments. And there's been faithful people in our church who are tech savvy, who've helped our pastor get up and running. And it's really remarkable. Are you finding, um, you know, you're getting new people connected to your church? Uh, you, met, you mentioned that, uh, you know, people are, people are looking for, some people are looking for some answers. Yeah, we're, we're finding people, I think that in times like this, people really are looking for hope. Um, and one of the, th the ways that the internet allows us to do that is people still have a bit of anonymity with the internet, especially those who are seeking. And yeah. so I guess in a way that's kind of been helpful. And, and we found that a lot of our people in our church, um, like when we live stream on YouTube or on Facebook Live, we people in our church are sharing that to their own social media accounts and reaching out to their friends that way. And so we're seeing some of their friends who normally wouldn't um, come to our church or any church are, are tuning in to, to check this out. So that's been a, an amazing thing to see. Yeah, it's, you know, it seems to me, Brian, that, that uh, of course, we need human contact. And so in the long term, this can't be the the sole way that the church conducts business, yeah. uh, if you want to say it that way. But uh, I think one of the things that's probably going to change in the future is this is going to be more part of outreach of the local church uh, on an ongoing basis, sort of pushed some of our churches into doing this. And I, I, that, that might be a positive that comes out of this, as long as we remain with that also interpersonal structure as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's going to be important going forward. But I hopefully it'll have some positive changes in the middle of something that's as as awful as a, as this has been. Mm -hmm. uh, it it always could be worse, and there's always things that we can look for that God is doing. Now, um, you know, one of the things that we plan on in the show, and really I want to give you credit for putting most of it together, is you know we got a lot of time on our hands, and we like to entertain ourselves, but uh, you have some 
words of wisdom for how maybe we could spend our time a little better. Yeah, I mean, we as a culture, don't we? We love our entertainment. Um, and, and so Netflix recently announced that they had, I think it was a 16 million new users for, through the first three months of this year as coronavirus was spreading and they've credited yeah. coronavirus with that. And so with this extra time on our hands, lots of us are, um, lots of people are, are um, entertaining themselves. And, and I got thinking about a verse in, in scripture, Ephesians 5, uh, 15 and 16 says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. And the context for this verse is, has to do with um, the deeds of darkness and, and using our time and, and particularly um, the, the things of faith. And so I got thinking about, you know, we have this extra time on our hands. How do we make the best use of that time in order to, in order to invest not just in our entertainment? And I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, some of the shows on Netflix anyways. Um, but, but how can we make good use of our time and be strategic and intentional about that to help invest and grow in our faith? There's a, a ton of good resources out there on the internet that can that can help us with that, and particularly yeah. in the whole area of biblical archaeology. Yeah, and that's one of the objectives of our episode is not to not to only avail people of our resources, but other ones as well. And in our next two segments, we'll be sharing that. You know, you reminded me of two things. One is when the when the people of Israel were sent into exile in Babylon. You know, the the analogy is not exactly the same. There's differences, but you know, you remember the admonition God told the people to to live, to work, to have children, to raise them. You know to do what they could do, even though they were in a, in a terrible circumstance. And I think that's a applicable, at least, at least a principle that's there is applicable. Again, there's differences, but, but the, I, the idea, and then I was thinking about, uh, boy, you think about the apostle Paul in prison writes, uh, writes an epistle, several yeah. epistles that impact millions and millions of people for two millennia. That's yep. extraordinary. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we tend to see this as, you know, as, oh, look at the things we've lost, the things we can't do. And, um, you know, I, I think you, you look at the opportunity and the way the Lord can use um, us in the midst of this uh, for his glory and the furthering of the kingdom. Is a, is a, it's a great opportunity before us. Yeah, yeah. And I think we, we need to look at it with wisdom. Well, friends, uh, we're finishing up our first segment here with uh, Brian Wendell. ABR staff member. We're going to be talking in our next couple of segments about some resources that we want to point you to, to encourage you in your walk with Christ, to lift you up in your faith, and uh, to really uh, bring some, some learning and some comfort and some peace during this time of trial that we're all going through. And we'll be right back after this message. In a culture of intense Bible-denying skepticism, Associates for Biblical Research exists to strengthen followers of Jesus by affirming the authority of the Bible. Our archaeological fieldwork and original research form a strong foundation in upholding the reliability of the Scriptures. For students or anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible, please visit our website and partner with us by joining our prayer team or financially supporting this ministry. And thank you for standing with us. Hi, welcome back to Digging for Truth. I'm your co-host, Henry Smith. I'm here today with Pastor Brian Wendell from Canada. He's an ABR staff member. We've been talking about the impact of the coronavirus, and uh, so we're going to be talking now in this segment about some resources we want to encourage you with uh, during this time. While there's a quarantine going on, when there's uh, not time to go out, uh, there are things available to us that can lift us up in our faith. And uh, of course, our program is about Bible archaeology primarily. And so, Brian, uh, Brian, you love archaeology, as do we. So let's, uh, let's go into that a little bit. Uh, let's maybe start with, um, for folks who may be new to the program, you know, what's the archaeology thing all about? How does this relate to the Bible and the gospel? Well, and I think that's a, that's a good and a fair question, Henry, that I think archaeology, and one of the reasons I love it, and the biblical archaeology, and where it's helpful, I think it does a, a couple of things for us with regards specifically to faith. The first is um, illumination. It, it illuminates uh, scripture. 
your scripture wasn't written in a vacuum. These books that were written were written by real people in real places at a real point in time. And so helping understanding the historical and the cultural background in which these books were written and to whom the people they were written really does help us better understand scripture itself. We sometimes we have these blinders on our eyes because of our Western 21st century understanding of things and we can misunderstand um, what was actually meant when it was written in scripture. So archeology span helps with that. It helps provide some of that historical and cultural background. And the second thing, and I think this is really important too, it's not just illumination, it provides affirmation. Um, we live in a world that's highly skeptical, that has um, everyone loves the latest conspiracy theory. Yes. And, and so yes. when it comes to the Bible, there's a lot of people who doubt the Bible or who are coming up with all sorts of weird and wonderful theories about why it wasn't written by, you know, the Torah wasn't written by Moses. It might have been written by other people. And, and archaeology helps affirm by showing us, for example, that the world of the patriarchs is, is accurately described in the book of Genesis. Um, and, and that would help us understand not only what's written, but also lend credence to the fact that it was Moses who, who penned those words. And so affirmation is really important. You know, when Luke wrote the book of Luke and, and, and Acts, he wrote it for a man named Theophilus. And he said he carefully researched everything um, interviewing eyewitnesses. And then he said this, so that Theophilus could have certainty concerning, concerning the things he had been taught. I think the principle there is that, that good historical research, biblical research, biblical archaeology even, should and can um, affirm one's faith. And that's why Luke wrote the book of, of Luke. And that's one of the reasons I'm really passionate about biblical archaeology, because I find it does the same thing. Yeah, that, that's great. You know, I was thinking, you made me think of uh, a, a, another thing that people struggle with is what, what Luke is saying there to Theophilus is the certainty of the things that you've been taught. People today don't like certainty. Uh, now, we would say the certainty does, is not generated from ourselves, but from God revealing himself and what he's done and the record he's left behind for us. And that certainty gives us rest and archaeology helps helps us to you know, rest in that truth. We, are, we already have the scriptures. We don't need more. And then God has been so kind to give us this wonderful world of archaeology, which just tells us more and more, yeah, I spoke, it's true, and here's evidence that's consistent with that claim. It's really remarkable. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Well, I was just going to say, we, we, there's still faith. There will always be faith. But it's not a blind faith. It's yes. a faith that is built on evidence and the things that are coming out of the ground and have been for over 150 years now in excavations time yes. and time again are affirming what we read in scripture. Yeah. So let's talk about some resources, Brian. Let's say, uh, hey, we want to tell people about, you know, of course, we have the ABR ministry. We'll talk about that. But, you know, you have a, a blog that you do. It's wonderful. And I think it's, it's a great addition to what we do at ABR as part of the staff. So go ahead and share about some that and some other resources. Sure. Well, I, I'm kind of new to blogging. Um, I've only been really going hard at it for about a year and a bit now, but, uh, but have been following blogs before that. And so there were, there were some favorite blogs that I was following. Um, and, and then I started my own. I, I blog post about once a week uh, almost. And um, kind of my blog, the niche that I have for it is, is I'm trying to take archaeology and, and make it really accessible to, um, to the average person, particularly young people, um, in, in the sense that, um, you know, the blogs are short, they're meant to be read in about five minutes. And I'm trying to almost act like a translator, taking kind of some of the difficult technical stuff yeah. and, and making, it, making it accessible. So that's my blog, and it's, it's on all sorts of different uh, things. I've done um, kind of the series I've been working through recently is uh, what I call bioarchaeographies, um, uh, archaeological biographies. What, what can archaeology tell us about the lives of people who are named in scripture. And so I've been doing one of those a week almost for a little bit. Uh, but I also have followed other ones that I, I really um, highly recommend to readers that, that are, again, just excellent sources of information. Todd Boland's uh, Bible Places is a, has a blog. Um, Todd comes out every weekend 
with a, a resource which lists uh, highlights stories in biblical archaeology and history and geography because they're all connected right like geography and history and archaeology all kind of go hand in hand and yes. um and so many of the blogs that i recommend they it's not just strictly archaeology it kind of delves into all of that todd's is one of those um, you can sign up for his email list and um, that email comes out every weekend um, a weekend roundup, he calls it. Farrell Jenkins. Uh, Farrell's blog is just wonderful. Farrell has been taking pictures in the Holy Land for years and years. I think he's been leading tours there since 1967 and um, taught in the, the Biblical Studies Department at Florida College. He, he has all sorts of information available. His is on uh, farrelljenkins.blog. Um, Carl Rasmussen is another person who I highly recommend. He's the author of the, um, the Zondervan Atlas, and uh, he has a great blog at holylandphotos.wordpress.com, um, where he, he, again, very photo-based, uh, where you can actually see the places that you read about in scripture, yes. see yes. some of the things um, that, that we read about. And, and I would, I'd also recommend Titus Kennedy. Titus has, has published a number of, of articles in, in ABR's Bible and Spade magazine. He's an archaeologist. Um, his website is at AP, uh, sorry, APXAIOC dot com <laughs> and that does that does stand for something i think it's greek but uh but he yeah. he does a great job too of of summarizing things these are all really good blogs that are easy to read and uh and yes. you can find and fill your time with as you as you learn about uh archaeology and history and geography of scripture that's great great stuff brian we're going to put that stuff up on the screen for folks to refer to the lord has provided an enormous number of resources to to encourage people during this time. And folks, we'll be back for our final segment with Brian Wendell right after this message. Bible in Spade is a non-technical quarterly publication published by the Associates for Biblical Research. Written from a scholarly and conservative viewpoint, Bible in Spade supports the inerrancy of the biblical record and is a must read for both the serious Bible student and anyone asking if they can really trust the Bible. Archeological evidence properly interpreted upholding the history of the Bible. Subscribe today at BibleArchaeology.org. Hi, welcome back to Digging for Truth. I'm your co-host, Henry Smith. I'm here today with Brian Wendell, ABR staff member, and pastor in Canada, and we're talking about resources to encourage you during the time of quarantine, during the coronavirus, Thing, uh, resources that you can read that will lift you up in your faith and uh, encourage you in your confidence that you can trust the Word of God. Now, Brian, we left off with uh, uh, quite a few resources. As, as I said, we're going to put those on the screen for folks, but let's turn to ABR's website. you got some favorite articles uh, that, you, that you like to talk about uh, from from the ABR website, go ahead with that, please. Yeah, well, I mean, part of part of me kind of getting sucked into this <laughs> wonderful rabbit hole of biblical archaeology <laughs> was me stumbling across uh, ABR's website years ago, and so I've I've enjoyed many of the articles that are on there, and so some of my favorites for people who are who are have some time on their hands and they're looking maybe to learn something new. Maybe they're reading scripture and they're going, hmm, I wonder if, if about that, if there's any historical evidence for that. Um, uh, just, I'll just name some. Uh, Dr. Charles Ailing, who's an Egyptologist, has a six-part series on Joseph in Egypt. Um, that's what it's called, Joseph in Egypt. Um, you can just go to ABR's website at Bible Archaeology. Dot org and in the search tab, just type in uh, Joseph in Egypt, and you'll find uh, all six of his articles. Um, if you are into the Exodus, um, Gary Byers, uh, our friend and, and archaeologist, has has a great two part series with some new evidence on the the location of the Red Sea or the the Exodus Sea crossing. Um, of course, Dr. Bryant Wood's classic article, "The Rise and Fall of the Thirteenth Century." Exodus conquest theory, theory, theory is really one that, that I think everyone should read. Um, of course, at ABR, we, we take scripture literally, and when um, we believe that that would lead to a 15th century um, exodus and conquest. And so Dr. Wood has done a really good critique of the 13th century theory. 
Um, Doug Petrovich has a great one on, on Amenhotep II as the Pharaoh of the Exodus. And um, the one I found uh, for a New Testament one, uh, Joan Taylor has a really good one on the location of Golgotha um, and, and the history, history around that. So there's just yes. some great resources there. You can just search in the search tab. Yeah, we, we've got hundreds of articles. Those are great recommendations. And in addition to that, uh, you know, up to, I think, 80 episodes so far of Digging for Truth uh, also are all posted on the ABR website. Uh, so, I mean, it's all free. And so, you know, we want people to, to go to our site and read and, and type in a subject and try to find out what they can about uh, how they can trust the scriptures. It's, uh, we're, we're very thankful that the Lord has allowed us to have this resource for uh, people who are searching for truth. Yep. Yep. And there are other resources, too, that are really good. Um, you, you mentioned Digging for Truth. Uh, it's on ABR's website. You can look on ABR's um, YouTube channel and, or, and follow us on Facebook. And, and they're regularly being posted there, um, over 80 articles there. A couple of other good resources, Appian Media um, just did a really good series called uh, Searching for a King. Uh, Dr. Scott yes. Stripling from ABR was featured in it. And uh, you can find that at their website, appianmedia.org, searching for a king. We'll put the, the link on screen. Uh, Wayne Stiles is a, does a really neat job of, of looking at the Holy Land and archaeology, and, and, but almost from a devotional point of view, really helpful yes. faith lessons. And uh, he has virtual tours that you can sign up for on his website, walkingthebiblelands.com. And uh, the other one I would suggest is Gordon Govier does a really good job of his podcast. He has a weekly podcast called The Book and the Spade. It's at his website, which is radioscribe.com. And um, again, uh, Dr. Stripling and others have been interviewed on that numerous times. It's just a really good weekly update of what's happening in the world of biblical archaeology. Yeah, that, that's that's great. Uh, you know, we did an interview with uh, for searching for a king. You mentioned that that's a great series. I mean, it's free. It's yeah. been phenomenally done, and uh, I like Wayne Styles' stuff too. He boils it down to an application. You know, we like we love archaeology, and it's a, it's a you know, in a way, it kind of has an intellectual angle to it a little bit. You know, studying evidence and making an argument and talking about pottery and those kind of things. What I like about Wayne's uh, blog is that. You know, he brings it home to, well, how do I apply this? Yeah. How, how, do, how do I apply this? And I, I like these resources because, you know, we at ABR, we can't do all of these different angles. And it's these friends of ours, God has raised them up to sort of hit archaeology from different angles. So I think that's great, Brian. So let's, let's move into, uh, well, you know, good old-fashioned books. We got, about a, <laughs> we got about a minute and a half or so. So uh, you're going to have to do a quick run-through. You know, what if somebody wants to just thumb through the pages in the good old-fashioned way? You know what? There are great books and great resources available, and even some new ones that have just come out in the last year or so. And uh, I should mention, I mean, you can find these. Uh, ABR has a bookstore uh, at BibleArchaeology.org. We have a bookstore. Some of these resources are for sale there. Uh, others you can get on, um, on Amazon. Some may be used. But um, a, a couple that I would recommend. If you're looking for a good, um, easy-to-read introduction to biblical archaeology, Dr. Scott Stripling, The Trowel and the Truth, is a great little read. Um, my, my son got it for me for my birthday a year or two ago, and uh, it, I found it a really good read. I actually have an, a, a book review of it on my website at BibleArchaeologyReport.com if people want to kind of check that out before they buy it, but I recommend that. A Zondervan came out about a year ago with the Zondervan Handbook of Biblical Archaeology, and it goes book by book through the Bible, looking at some of the archaeology, and has a really good introduction to biblical archaeology right at the beginning. It's by Randall Price. Um, a new one that just came out literally within the last month or two is, um, is the Harvest Handbook of Bible Lands, and it's by, by Joe Holden and Stephen Collins. But um, if you open it up and you look at some of the people who did some of the inserts, you'll see some very familiar names because Gary Byers is there from ABR and Scott Stripling from ABR and That's some great. other. It's a who's who of, uh, of biblical archaeology helping on that one. Um, and again, looking at 
Bible lens, but but doing so from a historical, archaeological, geographic yeah. perspective. The ESV Archaeology Study Bible, NIV Archaeological, there are just so many really good books out there. Well, Brian, that's uh, you gave the audience a lot to work with. They, they're not going to have idle time. You know, the old expression, <laughs> idle hands are tools for the devil. We're not going to let that happen to our folks who support us. Thank, yep. you for, thank you for being with us, Brian, and for sharing today. We appreciate you so much. It's Friends, a I, we hope that you are encouraged uh, by this program of Digging for Truth. Know that there's resources out there to encourage you during this time of quarantine. We pray that God will bless you and walk with you closely during this uncertain age. Thank you for joining us.